Hi, this is Joan, and I hope that you're having a great Sabbath, and this is being recorded on October 16th, 2021. Well, um, I know I left off in the middle of a video, and uh, the thing is, so many things happened before I can actually get to the computer. I was talking about one thing, then 10 other things happened, so let me go back and see what I was talking about. Okay, this is the point I was trying to make, and I wasn't able to because the computer just shut off or something. But anyway, um, I have tried to be subtle, and sometimes I think when I try to be subtle that uh, the whole point I'm trying to make is kind of missing. And I have been accused of being blunt, so I think maybe that might be better. So let me just basically say what I'm trying to tell you, and have been trying to tell you, is that it is not the Bible that is misleading you, that is misleading women in particular and telling you that you are supposed to bow down to your male counterpart. It's not the Bible telling you that. It is their interpretation of the Bible. Now, I recently saw a video by Cynthia G. I know I mention her a lot, but... Um, she was going over the Monahan report. Now, I hadn't seen that or even given it much thought since about the 80s. Because at that point, at that time, women were rejecting it, black women, based solely on the, on the fact that it accused black women of being matriarchs. So I appreciated that Cynthia went over it and showed that, no, it is not the report that is an error. It is the interpretation or the misinterpretation of it and the fact that you haven't really read it yourselves. Well, I feel and I, I kind of know the whole thing, the same thing can be said of the Bible. And it is a much more important document. It was written long before that. And it even predicted the situations that would uh, be described in the Monaghan Report. So I see all these really intelligent, beautiful black women and the more educated they are and the more self-assured, they the more they seem to really hate the Bible. And like I said, it's not the Bible telling you this. It is that you are listening to people who are misinterpreting it. Misinterpreting it. Okay, I could say listening to men who are interpreting it. Misinter Why am I having trouble with that word? Misinterpreting it. It's not just men. Women are doing it too. And the thing is, it's a big book and most people just don't want to read it. And even when you read something, sometimes your whole ideal is um, based on what you have been told about it. So you can read the words and if you're not thinking about it, you're just going to go about what you've been told. And you will dismiss any information that you're even reading if it doesn't support the information you've already received. Sometimes it's kind of like people, like when I was in grammar school, before you went to the next grade, the people from, you'd ask the people, the children who were older, what that teacher was like. And they would tell you, oh, she's hard, or, oh, she's nice. And that would influence what you expected once you got there. And if you weren't careful, you would ignore any kind of information she gave you other than that. And it's the same with the Bible. Most people don't bother to read it, male or female. Uh, you have been told or conditioned, indoctrinated even in that to a certain extent, that this is what this is saying. So even when you read certain parts of it, you might feel like, oh, well, this supports what I was told. And that's why I'm not reading anymore. Or no matter how much I read, I see this, that, or the other thing. But I think that if you really read it, it is not telling you that women are to bow down. I think, if anything, it's telling you not to. I think that it is telling you that, um, let me put it this way. Like, sometimes you would watch, you can watch a movie, and there'll be the, the hero. And then there'll be someone who is helping the hero. Usually he's not quite as attractive and he might be older, but there's something about him you like. He is, uh, what is that movie with Sean Connor, The Untouchables? He is somebody who is likable. You know, he's uh, loyal, he's doing, he's helping out a lot. A lot of times in these movies, 
that character will be killed off or you think that character is killed off so you're like oh no what's gonna happen well that character some of the time was not actually killed off they were taken out of the action the action continues partially with the hero you know having to go on without that great assistance that they had before they have to figure it out well to me in a way that kind of looks like what happened in the Garden of Eden now bear with me oh and while you're listening please consider uh, subscribing commenting and uh, sharing but anyway the way that fits in with my ideal of the Garden of Eden is that Eve was taken out of the action now she was neither older nor less attractive but she was the only way he could procreate so she's still there in this particular instance but she is kind of like in handcuffs so she's watching the action certain things are happening to her but there's a limit to how much she can actually get do get done rather and I know people don't like to hear anything like oh it's a curse you know especially people who think the Bible is just mean to women and I was one of them and um, my background is such that I don't think I was a male like a, what are they saying a male worshiper I think that I was questioning many many things and that my parents like everybody else's were not perfect but I did think my father was the nicer of the two. Um, Mom was the law. She was the law. If she said, if you looked out at that sky and said, hey, Mom, sky's blue. She said, no, it's not. It's purple. You better say it's purple or you might want to consider moving out or something. So I did not come to this with a prejudice against black men. If anything, when I first started really looking at videos, or paying attention to what was being said on them it was because I was looking at information from the Hebrew Israelites about uh, black people being people from the Bible because I had often wondered when I sat at the hall well you're telling me all these curses are gonna come on God's people but I don't see them coming on the people over there I see them coming on black people so you know explain this so when the Hebrew Israelites came out and they were like well that's because the people in the Bible are black I was like oh okay got it I understand but then they started saying we can't stand these white men or black women because black women are betrayers and I'm like what no no you, you don't understand I mean look at history black women have always been the most loyal so that's what got me started here but in any case back to the topic at hand in the video I didn't finished siege with Tyrone oh no oh no that is um, paying homage to the Wizard of Oz where she said uh, lions tigers and bears oh no oh no or something like that so to me siege with Tyrone oh no oh no the Bible is telling you and I have quoted it many times before in Isaiah chapter 3 that at some point your most educated most useful people are going to be taken from you Judah they are and they already are look at how many people your doctors your your uh, nurses um, to a certain extent your social workers your police officers even all these people who have done some things done some things wrong but have been useful to your community and keeping cohesiveness and stuff like that they are refusing um, the snake bite a lot of them or taking it reluctantly or feeling like they're being pushed around to the point where many are just saying forget this and walking off their jobs that is to me that is a fulfillment or it could be a fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 3 where he says you know I'm taking these people away from you but he's also the Heavenly Father is not only saying that I'm taking this from you he also says I'm taking away food and water okay so you're stuck here now in Chicago a very large city third largest and I had thought to myself okay first you see all this stuff in California and New York you know like the first is New York then California the third in population Chicago 
Well, anyway, so now Chicago, the police officers are saying, you know what? I don't think so. I don't think I should be forced to take the snake bite. A lot of them are like, well, you know what? I'm, I quit. Okay, you've got this large metropolitan city that uh, has many, many violent activities going on with the police there. So you take the police away, it's kind of like, wow. And that is what the scripture said. Your mighty men, your your officers will be taken away from you. Your food and your water will be taken away from you. How do you think that's, what do you think that's going to look like? That is being called under, well, uh, at one point it had gotten so bad with uh, teenagers going to downtown Chicago that they said, okay, teenagers are not allowed to go to downtown Chicago. I think that I have that in memory and I don't feel like looking it up, but I think that that's what it said. It was only for a short while because so many people, I think that might have been last year with all the riots or something. Or Elsa was right before it. But in any case, they said, okay, these people cannot come here. My thought is, what if they say, you know, like the King Alfred's plan? They've been talking about that. It's going to happen to the black community since the 60s. So what if it actually did happen? What if you were under siege in your own community? That is, if you're African-American. You're under siege, but you're not under siege with a bunch of people who are Bible thumpers and trying to live by the Bible. You are under siege with men who feel that they hate you. I mean, they hate black women. I mean, to me, this woman on this, uh, this steel here, this is a beautiful black woman. But the thing is, they don't care if you're a beautiful black woman. For a fact, that might make them even angrier. It's kind of like, how dare you? You know, you're going against what I have said against you. I said you aren't beautiful and here you are showing up being beautiful. That, that might make them even more angry. Do you want to be locked up with angry black men? Now, I'm not saying you want to be locked up with anybody or a hat. Well, yeah, I guess it's better to be locked up with one who likes you than one who doesn't. But the thing is, they don't. And I was also looking at the Noah had laws. And like I said, I was not being blunt, but I'm thinking about the Noah had laws. Now, that sounds just the the word Noah had. You think, oh, it has something to do with Noah. OK, she's a Bible thumper. That must be a good thing. No, everybody pretty much is a child of Noah. This is a replacement basically for the Ten Commandments of the Bible with Seven Commandments. And it seems to coincide a lot with the um, those stones that have the Ten the uh, Rules of the of the New World Order. But anyway, one of their things is that if you say that the Savior that they that the you know that the Savior is the Savior, for them that is some a reason to cut off your head. Now, to me, that coincided with uh, the sudden withdrawal from Afghanistan and the way that they have opened the borders up to Middle Easterners, but told all the Haitians to get out. So to me, all that together spells black women, you better be extraordinarily prayerful. And uh, I'm not just saying this to you like I'm living somewhere else. I'm trying to warn everyone. And like I said, I did not come here with a dislike for black men. Now, I have never thought that men were the end all and the be all because my background is, like I said, my mother ran everything. I mean, she ran to me and I was the youngest and my sister, my older sister says, no, you, you just run around to see stuff. Maybe so. But my reality was Mom was the law. My father came in. He, um, he brought things with him when he came home. He was the type who'd smile at you, maybe pat you on the head, and then he was gone. So it's not like I had any great dislike for him or anything. I, I, um, I did think, like I said, 
that he was the nicer of the two of them, but I also saw that when they split up, my mother could handle stuff on her own. So I was never under the idea that you had to have a man and that his rule was law. I was never like that. I always thought that men were kind of like the frosting on a cake. You don't have to have frosting on a cake. You don't even have to have cake. I mean, you might like to have a nice frosted piece of cake, but if push come to shove and and you you just don't have to have it. So, you know, like I said, I don't think I some of this generation you have been fortunate in that you are able to say things and uh on a larger platform. Because the things that are being said now, I was screaming years before because I was married to a um, a man who exhibited many narcissistic behaviors. So when I was screaming about, wait a minute, this is wrong, that's wrong, he shouldn't be doing this, how are you going to tell me that? I was in the middle of the hall. And that's when I learned how male loving everything is, especially religion. And that is why I'm here. But the Noah had laws, almost everything that you do that they don't like, the penalty is not jail for the most part. It is more likely to be cut off the person's head. And the movie I have been telling you about or trying to for the longest is this. Now this is the movie uh, you can find on Voodoo Fandango, Masters of Horror. The screw fly solution. Now I was trying to play the trailer, but you know, I have gotten so used to violence that I didn't remember just how much violence there was in this movie. So um let me just leave this here and you can see it for yourself. You know, if you and I do hope that you watch it because I do think a lot of what they are putting off as fiction is what they are planning on. And that's just the powers that be planning on doing to people um, in the near future. And in this case, it is only women. That is the point I'm trying to make. And it does have, uh, and I say, say to this before, it does have a basis in reality, in, in history, and that they have been during the witch hunts in various places where the hatred of women got to the point where they pretty much killed all the women in some certain villages and stuff. But um, if you read what it says, it begins with a terrifying right rash of isolated homicides around the world. Notice around the world, not just in America, everywhere. Normal male sexual urges have suddenly transformed into violent rage. Now you may remember, I think it was in New York not too long ago, a woman after work went to a store to buy like... Uh, some liquor or something and there were maybe five black men there this was a black woman and let me add also the master of horrors does not have any black women in it that I can remember but I still think that this is really referring or more more dangerous for black women you know than any other race of women and uh, you know even right now there are there is a serial a uh, person, serial, I'm a, you know what I mean, serial, K-I-L-L-E-R, in St. Louis, targeting women, black women in particular. But anyway, uh, the woman went to the store to buy just something, you know, a drink or something after work, and there were five black men there. So she uh, was approached by one who offered to buy the drink for her, and when she said no and left the store, you you know the story. They uh, chased her and then tried to, they attacked her and tried to bite her eye out. So I'm using that to 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 show you that what they were showing you in 2006 is actually happening now. Okay, uh, this is just some information on Meek Mill's uh, album cover. I, I watched a couple of videos about it 
and I really have not paid much attention at all to Meek Mill. I haven't paid much attention to any of the rappers or anything too much, but um, if you were on YouTube, you couldn't help but hear about his album cover, and you know, you can look at the checkerboard floors and the dice and everything to know that this is has something to do with masonry, and if you really examine a lot of um, secret society, societies and masonry and stuff like that, a lot of it seems to be, in my opinion, uh, white supremacists. Even the boule is white supremacists and that they're protecting the secret societies that uh, sometimes wouldn't even let black people be members. And, and um, also the same with the sororities and fraternities. You had to be mixed of mixed race a lot of times to even get into them so I, I never could understand black people who wanted to be in them but in any case the point I'm making is his video though some people like to call it art is disrespectful of black women and I had said a long time ago that if you really look at it taking your clothes off seems to be related to having less power putting more clothes on is more power. I mean, like when you graduate college, they don't say take all your clothes off and go across this aisle. They tell you to put some more clothes on. And if you are like a, a re religious person, a, a Christian in particular, usually, traditionally, women put on more clothes when they got married. Well, now, you know, things have changed, but generally, a woman put on a veil, she put on this, she put on that. When she got married, wedding dresses were big but um the thing is you can show black women they've been doing that since national geographic days you can show black women buck naked and say oh well that's how they dress in their tribe and this is art or it's basically saying well sh she's like an animal she doesn't count do you get upset when uh you show a picture of a cat and it has no uh no covers on well why should you be upset about this well, um, the thing about this is that it is, yeah, remember when Erica Badu walked down the street buck naked or, well, she pulled her clothes off in front of everybody. Um, black women being naked is not seen as anything disrespectful. But if you try to do that with women of any other race, their men would step up. They would step up because, like I said, Clothing seems to imply dignity. Respect, lack of clothing seems to be just the opposite. So, uh, like I was saying, I started on YouTube because I was looking at the Hebrew Israelites or just the idea that, oh, wow, the people in the Bible are black. That makes a lot of sense. Let me learn more. And then I saw what they thought of black women. And it is, for me, very hard to respect people who are getting hit and then go hit other people because I feel like you know you know what it feels like so it's even worse for you so I feel that way about black men I mean black men are really quick to cry about this happened to me I got this when I tried to go talk to this white woman with her boyfriend standing there he he tried to stop me and how dare he stop me because you know I suffered in slavery for 400 years well, you know what? Black women suffered in slavery too, and black women were still getting beat upside the head, not just by you, not just by the dominant society, but also your Bibles. Now, I defend the Bible. Like I said, it's the misinterpretation of it that is the problem, but that misinterpretation has been putting women in straight jackets for the longest. So it is very difficult to respect someone who you are suffering more than them, but they tell you that your suffering doesn't count. What's more, it isn't even happening. You, as a black woman, might be saying, ouch, but black men are coming up saying, well, if you're saying, ouch, you're just wrong. This is based upon their interpretation of the Bible, not just black men, but men in general. And like I said, I, I think that men in general feel superior, especially if they're coming from a Christian or some something similar background. The difference is that men of other races like being a member of that race. 
to the point where they recognize the only way I can continue to have for my children to have the benefits I have is if I go find a woman who has the same characteristics. You know, I can't clone myself, but if I get somebody who looks like me, I'll at least have somebody who looks like me and I'll be continuing, I'll be continuing the strength of my nation. Black men don't feel that way and it is very difficult to respect people who, as I said, when they get beat up, go beat up somebody else. Well, anyway, I thought it'd be good to look at the uh, association between uh, exposure to sexuality early in a person's life and, you know, what does it do eventually. Now, this is an old article from Psychology Today from 2012. So, you know, you can say it's too old to consider or not, whatever. Some things I think that you really don't need to have... You don't need to look it up. You don't need to turn on the TV and find a weather a weather report when you can just step outside or just look through your window. But, you know, it's good to have uh, some support for what you're saying. Now, uh, this is talking about media. It's not talking about things that are on the sides of buses. But I think you can kind of figure one might be similar to the other. So, as I said, this is an article from Psychology Today by Carolyn C. Ross, M.D. And, uh, okay, overexposed and underprepared, the effects of early exposure to sexual content. Is the Internet impacting sexual development? They grow up so fast, uh, parents often lament. Today, children are being sexualized earlier and earlier, in part because they're exposed to sexual material in movies, television, music, and I guess now you can say also the sides of buses depicting black women in various sexual states. Also, with widespread access to the internet, curious teens and preteens may accidentally or intentionally be exposed to millions of pages of material that is uncensored, sexually explicit, often inaccurate, and potentially harmful. But if it's being done to a black woman, it's art. Well, you know, and excuse me, I will be adding some editorial content as we go. So what? If kids don't understand it, how can they be affected by it? Even if young children can't understand sex or its role in relationships, the images they see can leave a lasting impression. It's a basic premise of marketing that what we watch, read, and direct our attention towards influences our behavior. And, as any marketer knows, sex sales. That's why we see products and services that have nothing to do with sex being marketed in increasingly sexualized ways. Now, as I was saying before, I, I myself have never seen a bus that had um, sexually explicit images of... Well, actually, this is the first time I've seen any bus that had any sexually explicit um, things going on. So I can't say, well, this only happens in the black race. Well, right now, I guess you can say it because it's only happened here. But this is totally unprecedented as far as I know, so... Of course, black people, black men, would have to have started it. And again, I, my my first images of black men were pretty positive. I thought my father was the most dignified man ever, and he was very quiet. And I, so to this day, I, I tend to really like Capricorn men. I think that a Capricorn man, because he's so distant and seems so strong and quiet is very attractive but that's an aside let me continue children as young as eight and nine are coming across sexually explicit material on the internet and in other media although research is just beginning to access to assess the potential damage there is reason to believe that early exposure <laughs> exposure to sexual content may have the following undesirable effects okay now as far as this bus thing, this is only in the black community and it only had black women on that uh, bus. And, you know, another thing to note is black men 
when they show women on their whatever media they have any kind of control over, it is generally ambiguously black women. I mean, that is black women who are black only because you follow the one drop rule. But when they want to show something that, you know, you have to argue about it being actual art, you know, because the definition of art is so uh, un undefined, then they can suddenly they can suddenly understand that a black woman has brown skin. Wow, that's deep. But anyway, let's keep going. Early sex. Research has long established that teens who watch movies or listen to music that glamorizes drinking, drug use, or violence tend to engage in those behaviors themselves. A 2012 study shows that movies influence teen sexual attitudes and behaviors as well. The study published in Psychological Science found that the more teens were exposed to sexual content in movies, the earlier they started having sex, and the likelier they were to have casual, unprotected sex. In another study, boys who were exposed to sexually explicit material were three times more likely to engage in oral sex and intercourse two years after exposure than non-exposed boys. Young girls exposed to sexual content in the media were twice as likely to engage in um, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, but let's see, oral sex, and one and a half times more likely to have intercourse. Research also shows that teens who listen to music with degrading sexual references were more likely to have sex than those who had less exposure. Okay, well, rap music is all about violence, for the most part. It's all about uh, violence and degrading sexual references pertaining to black women. So, is it that this information is very easy to come across? And like I said, you don't really have to turn on a weather report to know what's going on. You can just open your door. You can just look out your window. So, the people who are promoting this, they know what effect it's going to have. They just don't care. Or, even worse, it's having the effect that they want it to have. Okay, let's keep going. Why are teens more likely to have sex after being exposed to sexual content in the media? Just as we read specific books and show educational movies to our children in hopes that they learn lessons from the characters, the media provides a type of sex education to young people. Media messages normalize early sexual experimentation and portray sex as casual, unprotected, and consequence-free, encouraging sexual activity long before children are emotionally, socially, or intellectually ready. High-risk sex. The earlier a child is exposed to sexual content and begins having sex, the likelier they are to engage in high-risk sex. Research shows that children who have sex by age 13 are more likely to have multiple sex partners, engage in frequent intercourse, have unprotected sex, and use drugs or alcohol before sex. In a study by researcher Dr. Jennings Bryant, more than 66% of boys and 40% of girls reported wanting to try some of the sexual behaviors they saw in the media, and by high school many had done so, which increases the risk of sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. Okay, so what has been the answer to this? Okay, like his bus, the side of his bus or his album cover shows um, it's black women that you are sexualizing. There were no unambiguous, no, I'm sorry, there were no ambiguous people there. Like I said, any other time they're trying to make a movie or something, black men decide that if her great, 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 great grandmother or father walked by a black person. Well, then she should be allowed to call herself black. But when they want to show women in sexually provocative positions on the sides of buses, they suddenly decide, oh, well, this is what a black woman looks like. They don't have anybody there who could be mistaken for anything else. So that is something also to make you take a look at um, at how much our men, black men, love black women. But anyway, sex, love, and relationship addictions. Not every child who is exposed to sexual content will struggle with a mental health d disorder.
but research shows that early exposure to pornography is a risk factor for sex addiction, addictions, and other intimacy disorders. In one study of 932 sex addicts, 90% of men and 77% of women reported that pornography was a factor in their addiction. With the widespread availability of explicit material on the internet and, you know, on album covers and on the sides of buses these days, these problems are becoming more prevalent and are surfacing at younger ages. Sexual violence. According to some studies, early exposure by age 14 to pornography and other explicit material may increase the risk of a child becoming a victim of sexual violence or acting out sexually against another child. For some people, habitual use of pornography may prompt a desire for more violent or deviant material, including depictions of um, stuff I can't say on um, on YouTube, but you, you know what it means. If people seek to act out what they see, they may be more likely to do stuff that I can't say on YouTube. Okay, preserving our children's youth. Early exposure to sexual content in the media may have a profound impact on children's values, attitudes, and behaviors toward uh, sex and relationships. Unfortunately, Media portrayals do not always reflect the message parents want to send. Here are a few ways that you as a parent can ensure that your message is heard. Know what your children are watching, playing, and listening to, and take advantage of teachable moments to discuss any inappropriate contacts or behaviors with them. Sounds really, really good, but try doing it. That is, can you follow your child around 24 hours a day, and when a bus goes by that has a big thing, of uh, black women by themselves showing themselves as sexual objects. Can you cover up their face and their ears before this thing goes by? Uh, can you be with them 24-7 on the internet or on their phones? And if you say, well, I'm not going to give you a phone, can you follow them to school and see that nobody else gives them a phone? Can you say, well, you can't go visit nobody. You can't visit your relatives or your friends because they might have you watching anything on the tele television, on the internet, on your cell phone. And, you know, a bus might go past that has naked black women doing whatever, you know. So, like I said, it sounds good, but can you actually do it? Set and enforce limits around screen time. Sure, when they're with you, but are they always with you? Make use of internet filters and parental controls. Okay, but is your child smart enough to go around them? You know, keep on. Share your family's values and expectations regarding sex and relationships. You're going to do that whether you mean to or not, just by them being around you and hearing you and seeing what you do. But let's continue. Talk to your child about media representations of sex, relationships, and gender roles, and teach them to question the accuracy and intent of the messages they receive. Yeah, I totally agree that you can do. Model healthy, respectful relationships and self-worth. Yes, if you have it, if you manage to get through this life and you have all that going on, definitely pass it on and try to get to know people who have children around the same age as your children so that your children will have somebody to marry. Because otherwise, you're sending them out as sheep among wolves. But let's continue. For most families, banning media from the home isn't a realistic option. Definitely. After all, most 8 to 18 year olds devote an average of seven and a half hours to media in a typical day, according to a 2009 study by the Kaiser Family Foundation, and more than half of that content contains sexual images or references. Now that was 2009, 12 years ago, when I don't think, like I said, to me it's totally unprecedented to have a bunch of naked black women on the sides of buses. You know, maybe they were, so a lot of things get past me, but you know, this study is old, and it's telling you back then, hey, this is going to make your kids crazy. And crazy kids don't stay crazy kids. They grow up to be crazy adults. And um, even if you are making sure your kids aren't crazy, your kids need other people. So you have to be concerned about not just yours, but everybody else's. But anyway, let's continue. The goal isn't to avoid the issue, but to 
approach it head on so that your children learn about sexual sex relationships from their most trusted source, you. Yeah, that sounds really, really good. What I really want you to remember is this is an old one. I mean, long before I think that even the thought of naked black women on buses was a good idea. But um, this information it out, is out here so that people know that regardless of whether you want to call this art or whatever, there are some things that it's a good idea to not expose your children to. So if they are exposing your children or their children or whatever children to it, and they're being encouraged to do it, could it be that this it is a certain outcome that they want to have? And again, I ask, do you want to be under siege with these men? Do, I mean, and actually with these women to a certain extent, too. Just a question um, to consider. Well, actually, even when you consider it, isn't this like what the world is doing? Like, see a fool bump his head? Like, if you're stupid enough to, um, let me not say stupid, but if you are uncaring enough to sell out your women, even when the information is right there, that displaying your women in this kind of manner is not going to help your whole community. But if you, if I pay you $2 and you do it, and you say, well, shoot, I don't care what effect it has on the community. I saw the community as a fool, so I bumped his head, okay? Or I saw the community as a lick, so I licked it. I mean, is that the way that you want to live? Like they used to say, well, baby, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And then I heard somebody say, but, you know, do you want to be a dog? I mean, shoot, you're human. Be happy to be a human. Don't. That means you act humanely, not, you know, there's no such word as... Um, dog -ainly. no you act you be a human but um that is not popular this is the devil's world this is a do as thou wilt world and it is like another movie i want to cover for you because it has been done so many times it's like they want to make sure that every generation gets that message and that is the invasion of the body snatchers I mean, they started in the 50s with that movie. Now, I was born in the 60s, and people born in the 60s watched a lot of old movies. So, I know that that movie came out in the 50s, and I remember we were sitting out watching it when it finally made it to TV, and it was so thrilling. Then they made it again in the 90s, then they made it again in the 2000s, so... It's probably been remade again, and I haven't seen it. But like I said, that there's a message in that movie that they want to make sure that every generation gets. I think it is because the devil has to tell you what he's doing. He's not allowed to just go sucker punch you. No, he has to tell you. Just like I saw this other video, I will show you really, really quickly. Okay. This was a great episode of Masters of Horror, and I think it explained a lot, so I just want to tell you to make sure you watch it if you get an opportunity. So let me show you the movie I was telling you about. Okay, I just found that there is another version coming out October 22nd, and it is Invasion on Apple TV+. Plus. And it says, five ordinary people across the globe try to make sense of the chaos surrounding them. Now, that is one that's coming out now. Now, when I type up Invasion of the Body Snatchers, it doesn't show you the Nicole Kidman one that came out in like 2009 or 2010. And it even told you something about the Adam gene made a person um, so that they could not contract this particular virus. And uh, basically what this virus did was it turned people from having any kind of emotions or empathy. Now, in the movies about the uh, body snatchers, they show you that if you turn off the empathy, you also turn off the violence, which is not true. You turn off empathy, you increase violence because the person doesn't feel. They can't understand what the other person is feeling. They cannot do unto others as you would have done unto you. They can't. 
because they can't understand what's done under you. They can't care about it. So the invasion of the body snatchers, even though I do think it is good at showing you that something's coming, there are some creatures that are going to look human, but they're kind of not. And I think also that is the, the difference between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. And Genesis 1, yeah, I do think that Adam... You know, a lot of occultists have said that Adam, I think it was Adam, was uh, an hermaphrodite. And uh, that he had both male and female. And it says in Genesis 1, male and female have I created the, you know. But Genesis 2 says, hey, Adam is one thing. And from Adam came Eve. So, but I definitely think, well, no, I don't. I kind of wonder if the devil... If angels in general aren't hermaphroditic, at least his particular kind, that was the seraphim, I think. Uh, because whenever they draw him, whenever they draw the Baphomet, they draw him as uh, having breasts like a woman, but, you know, other male parts. So, anyway, like I said, they remake this movie things similar to this movie yeah this was 92 so we have 56 78 92 another one is coming out oh the one with nicole kidman 2009 then we have one that's coming up now 2020 2021 so um like i said they are telling you that there are people walking amongst you who are taking over who do not have empathy. I think the major lie there is that lack of empathy causes you to be peaceful. These people walk around with no emotions. They just go do their thing, keep it moving. Nope. You take away empathy. People do not walk around having, you know, just doing their thing, doing their, their, um, business, their activities. No. They decide to attack you. You know, that's just how it works because let's say it's two of you walking down the street. One of you has an ice cream cone and you're a normal person. The other one does not have an ice cream cone. They are a body snatcher. They have no empathy. So they can't think to themselves or they won't think to themselves. Well, they worked for that ice cream cone. If I go work, maybe I'll get me an ice cream cone. Or I don't really need an ice cream cone. Or who cares about their ice cream cone one way or the other? Nope, they won't think that. They'll look at you and think, how dare you have an ice cream cone when I don't have one? So, because they have no empathy, they would feel not right, not, they would not feel wrong smacking you and taking it. And that is what we're coming up against now. And that is also kind of what I'm, I've, uh, I'm trying to explain here that people are being taught to not have empathy. They're being taught that that is a good thing. And while they're being taught that, they're taking, you're taking away the police officers. Now, I, I also know that there has, there has been some unfair treatment towards African Americans in particular. But I also know that you really, especially women, you really need those police officers. You need them to have empathy. You need them to be better than the rest of the population. But either way, that was somebody to call. So that also is just something to think about. And, you know, ultimately, that is all I'm trying to do is give you something to think about, to really look around at the world. But the point I've been making is that the Bible is being blamed for a lot of things that are not in the Bible. Just like that Moynihan report was used to club women over the head when actually when you read it, it didn't say the stuff that you've been taught. It said the Bible, I feel, is the same way. If you really examine what the Bible is telling you about Adam and Eve, it paints a pretty poor portrait to me of Adam. It says that he did not appreciate his wife at all that he sought to i kind of think he he was looking at someone else and the only other person or well, the only other person there that it tells you about directly is that servant but these are things you have to be prayerful about and i'm prayerful about because 
I truly believe that if I tell you the wrong thing, I got to pay. And I, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I don't want to be told the wrong thing. So, you know, be prayerful and please like, share, subscribe. Give me, uh, give me your comments. Let me know what you think. And this has been a long video. I didn't mean to make it that long. And I still know that it's something I'm forgetting to say, but I will try to say it tomorrow. But, um, I want to leave you with this. Okay, Luke 6, 31. As you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. You know, we used to just say, do unto others as you would have done to you. So, if you do that, if black men did that, they would not be throwing up pictures of identifiably black women on the sides of buses because or on album covers because they'd be thinking about well wait a minute i can't just think about me i have to think about the children who might see this i have to think about how is something about sexuality that is what is it unregulated or not appreciated that seems to lead to violence and i think that that is one of the messages of the screw fly solution and why i think as african-american women you really need to see that really need to absorb the information that is being given to you and also of course the savior's words that when he was being tortured what did he say he said hey you women out there particularly you Ju Judi judean women probably black women or black women you know don't cry for me, cry for yourselves and your children. And then he goes on to say, even the children, you know, you got to look out for them too, because when, when they grow up, they might be kind of special. And I think that that Psychology Today article is telling you that, you know, children grow up. They grow up and they do things. Yeah, that's another article I wanted to show you. And I don't mean to bombard you, but like I said, it'll be so many different things I mean to say. But uh, other things come up so I don't get around to doing it. So please bear with me and like, share, and subscribe, and comment. Okay, this is from Fox News, and this came out yesterday, which was October 15th. Iowa teen covered in blood admits to killing parents with knife and axe, police say. An Iowa teenager found by police soaked in blood is charged with killing his parents with a knife and axe because he wanted to take charge of his life, authorities said. Ethan Orton, 17, told Cedar Rapids police officers he killed his parents when they responded to his home just after 2 a.m. Thursday following reports of a suspicious person in the area, the department said. He was found sitting outside the home covered in blood. I don't know if he was expecting the police to come. When we arrived, the officer who encountered him first described him as being calm. Cedar Rapids Police Chief Wayne German told KWW-TV. After checking on Orton, the teen allegedly told officers he had killed his parents. Inside the home, the officers found the parents deceased in the living room. They were identified as Casey Arthur Orton, 42, and 41-year-old Misty Do 